In this episode, we're going to take the time to build out the custom cursor, as well as providing additional styles so that we can change the cursor's look. Now to create the custom cursor, we'll want to create a component specific to the custom cursor. Go ahead and create a new file in the components folder and we'll just name it custom cursor JS. And inside this file, we could do refce, and we'll just capitalize the first C in custom. Next, the only styled component we are returning is just a cursor component. So we could write the following like so. And actually, we could just do a self-closing cursor tag. Now this cursor component is going to come from the global styles. So let's go ahead and import that. And now let's jump to the global styles file so that we can create the cursor component. And my node modules folder is open, so let me close that. Okay, so we can go all the way to the bottom here and we can create the cursor component. So export cursor, and we're setting this to a style div. And the following styles will be a position of absolute. The top is going to be zero and the left is going to be zero. We're gonna give it a width of 32 pixels, a height of 32 pixels. The background color is going to be the red color. So what we could do is use our props. Our border radius is going to be a hundred percent so that we could make it into a full circle. And we have to add a semicolon there. We're going to also add a transform and we're using translate of negative 50% on the X and Y axis. This is so we could center the red circle uh, to the center of our mouse when we're moving around. We're also going to give it a transition. We're going to set all and 0.1 seconds of ease in, ease out. And the transition property is only going to be specific to the width, the height, and the border. And we'll add a will change similar to what we did for the transition property, which is going to be width, also height, the transform, and the border. Pretty much just telling the user agent what will change uh, depending on the different hover effects we have. We're also going to add a pointer events set to none and a Z index of 999, just so that this custom cursor can be on top of every other element on the DOM. Okay, so this is the default cursor that we have. And when we have hover effects, we'll add additional props similar to what we did here to change the effect or the style of the cursor. And we'll get to that in just a sec. Let's go back into custom cursor JS. And what I want to do is just display custom cursor in our layout JS. So let's open up layout JS scroll to the top and let's import cursor and we're importing this from the custom cursor js file we're going to drop cursor in after the global styles like so go ahead and save that and let's preview what we have so you can see at the very top left there is that quarter of a circle if we go to the global styles here and change the top and the left to 200 pixels and save that you can see that this is our default cursor right here it doesn't have any effects to where it's locking onto the scroll just because we haven't done that yet. That's what we're going to do next. Let's go back here and change the top and left back to zero. And honestly, this shouldn't matter uh, because we're going to define the top and left in a mouse position state. We're going to go in cursor JS. And what we're first going to do is define a state for the mouse position. So we'll do const mouse position and then we'll set mouse position. Oops, not timeout. Uh, we'll set mouse position and mouse position will be a use state that will contain two properties, an X property and a Y property. Now I don't necessarily like when the web page loads and the mouse is stuck on the top left of the corner. So in here, I'll set the default uh, values to 400 pixels just so that it could be sort of in this direction here. Now if we save this, we will get an error because we need to import use state from React. So let's go ahead and do that. And to get ahead of myself, we'll also need a use effect. So let's go ahead and bring that in. Now let's create a function uh, regarding the mouse movement. So I'll go ahead and do const on mouse move and mouse move will take an event. And what mouse move is going to do is just simply capture the pages X and Y that is relative to the window. So I'll use destructuring here and I'll say page X. And these are just JavaScript methods that you can use similar to like the offset of the window. So page X will be set to X and page Y will be set to Y and this is coming from event. Now we don't know what event is just yet, but what we'll do is we'll pass this function as an event listener to the document. So then document will become the event. 
Now what's going to happen when we capture the page X and page Y, we're going to update our state to whatever these values are. So we'll set mouse position and we'll set mouse position of X and Y. Now here's where we need to use the use effect. And so when the component loads, what we'll do is document dot add event listener. And the event listener is going to be mouse move. And so on mouse move, we'll run the on mouse move function. Now for the cleanup, we'll do the exact same thing, except we're going to remove the event listener. So instead of add event listener, we'll remove it. And we'll leave this as an empty array so that it can only run when the document or sorry, when the component loads. We can save this right now, but we still don't have anything working for our cursor. It's still in the top left. So here's where we are going to add styles. So it's hard coded styles. It's not like a class name. And what we're going to do is say left and left is going to represent the mouse position of X. So we'll grab the state. Actually, we need to use that and we'll grab mouse position dot X. And so mouse position dot X will then be initially it will be 400, but it will change depending on the mouse move. And we'll do the exact same thing for our top. Top is just going to be the mouse position dot X or sorry, dot Y. And if we save this and take a look, it still doesn't seem to work. Um, and I think that's because of the pixels right here. So we need to add pixels right there and see if this works. So let's refresh. Okay. So it picked up the fact that it was on 400, but it's not updating. And looking at the text here, I did mouse mouse which makes absolutely no sense. So let's switch this to mouse move and save that. Okay, so now we see that the red circle is following our mouse position everywhere we go. And you can see that there's a slight little delay and that's because of that transition effect we added in CSS, but that's fine. I do like it being a tiny bit of delayed, which is not honestly delayed, it's more of easing. Okay, so we got that working and that looks good. What we want to do now is get rid of the mouse cursor. And so by getting rid of the mouse cursor, we'll also get rid of any hover effects. We have already gotten rid of the mouse cursor. It's just we left it commented out. So if we go to not global styles, but layout.js, you can see that the cursor set to none. Just uncomment this and let's go back to our project. And you can see that the red circle works just like we want it. If we click here, it changes the current theme, which is good. Okay, so now we want to add the hover effects to where the cursor then expands when we hover on something or it just locks uh, compared to the other ones. So let's go back in our project. We can go inside cursor JS and for this actually, we'll need the global context. So let's open up global context here. And then what we could do is we can close layout JS and leave global styles for now. Now what I want to do is I want to create an initial state defining what the mouse styles uh, currently are. And then I want to just be able to loop through uh, an array of different styles that we provide just so that every time we hover on a specific element, we can specify what that elements um, class or style is going to be. So what I'll do is initially we'll have a cursor type and cursor type will be set to false, meaning that there is no uh, styles on it. And then we'll create an array with the different styles that we have. So we can call this cursor styles. And for now, we'll give it uh, two specific styles. We'll give it a pointer and we'll give it a hovered style. So pointer and then we'll say hovered. Let's save that. And then for our action type, we can copy what we did for the case toggle theme. Except we'll switch toggle theme to cursor type. And with cursor type, we're returning the state so that we don't mess with the current theme. And then what we'll do here is write cursor type, since that is what we're updating. And we'll set cursor type, which is the false, we'll set that to whatever the action cursor type will be. So we can copy cursor type again. Now this doesn't make too much sense, but you'll see uh, when we run the dispatch, it'll make more sense. So essentially what I want to do is, let me save this for now. Um, when I hover on the A link or the fur link, I want the cursor to expand into a larger size and only have a border. So what I'll say is I'll run a function when this is hovered, I want to set the hovered class on it and I want to update the global cursor type, which is set to false 
to a hovered type, which will be defined in the cursor type in that function that I provide. Okay, so our global state is done here, but let's go ahead and do that function to where we can update or run a dispatch that will update the global state. So in custom cursor JS, we'll first need to import the dispatch hook. So I'll say this is the context and I'll import use global dispatch context and we're going to import this from the context. Now the easiest way to do this is I'll go ahead and create a function in the layout JS and so we'll pass that function around anywhere we need it to be used. So anytime we hover on any specific element, we'll run that function to either update the cursor type to pointer, hovered, or any additional styles we'll define. Now the first one we're going to create is specific to this logo. So what I'll do is I'll open up layout.js and in here we'll create just a on hover or on cursor function that will then pass down to the header so that we can update the style of the cursor when we hover on a specific element. So what we'll do is go ahead and create a const on cursor and we'll pass in cursor type. And so whatever our cursor type is, whether that be hovered or pointer, uh, that will then be updated to the cursor type state. So in layout.js, we do need the context for the dispatch. So I already have the use global state, but we also need use global dispatch context. Okay, so make sure we import both of these uh, context hooks. Scrolling back down to our function, what we'll then do is we'll set cursor type equal to, and what this is going to do is it's going to check if the cursor type we provided matches anything to the context uh, styles. So we're going to check if what we provided, which is going to be a string, if it matches pointer and or hovered. And if it does, then we're going to update the cursor type. And if it doesn't, we're just going to set whatever we provided to false because that cursor style was never defined. Now to do that, we'll want to bring in cursor styles in layout.js. And I believe we already defined current theme. So we can just bring in cursor styles here as well, like this. Now I did a mistake. Uh, this function should not exist outside of the layout component. So let's bring it here and we'll put it underneath these two properties that we imported. So like I mentioned, we're checking if cursor styles is equal to the cursor type. And if it isn't, then we're setting it to false. Go ahead and write cursor styles, which is an array. And we're going to say includes, which is going to check if that string exists inside the array. And what we're checking inside this includes array is the cursor type parameter that we pass. So we'll write that in there. And we're going to say end cursor type. So end exists cursor type. And then we're adding the or false. So if it doesn't, we're just going to set it to false automatically. Once that's checked, we are then going to dispatch. And so the type is going to be whatever our case is. So our case is cursor type. And what we're updating is we're updating the cursor type to whatever our cursor type is here. So we'll say cursor type again. So this seems a little confusing because there's a lot of uh, reference to cursor type, uh, but I promise it'll make a lot more sense here in a second. After we plug it in, I'll then break it down to explain it a bit more. So let's go ahead and save this and we can get our hide global context for now. Now we'll want to pass this on cursor function to the header. So let's go ahead and do on cursor down to the header so that we can access it inside the header. And if we open up the header component, we can then use destructuring to bring in on cursor. So what we'll do is when we hover on the logo, we want to add a mouse enter event listener. So on mouse enter, and then in the mouse enter, we'll run the on cursor function. And then whatever argument this is going to be is whatever the cursor type is. So I'll write hovered. And then on mouse leave, we are only going to return the on cursor function, removing this hovered class name off of our styles. So if I save this and then jump back in, uh, we get errors. So dispatch is not defined. And I think that's in, dun, 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 that's in layout.js. So if we go to layout.js, you can see we're using dispatch here, but it was never defined. Now to define dispatch, we could just do const dispatch. And that is equal to use global dispatch context. And now let's check if we have any errors. Okay, so we don't. 
Now to check if hovering on the header updates the global state context, uh, we'll need to check it out in the console. Now you will need the React uh, components, a part of your dev tools, but if you don't have it, it's fine. We could check it here. So if we click on the context provider, we can see we have values and cursor type is currently set to false. So let me add this to the bottom of this screen. And so right now cursor type is false. And then when we hover, you could see that the cursor type gets updated to hovered. When we hover off cursor type right here, it gets back to false. And when we hover again, it's hovered, hovered, false. So you get the idea. It's updating and letting us know that we're hovering on something. And from there, that's when we want to let the cursor know that it's been hovered or there's a hovered class on it so that we could update the styles. Back in our project, we can then go to custom cursor JS and in the cursor, we'll add a class name and class name will have the back ticks and we're going to have a ternary operator. So it's going to have double explanation points for whether the cursor type is truthy or falsy. And so we could do cursor type. And if it is, then we're going to set it to hovered because this is going to be regarding sort of a, uh, the global aspect. Uh, every time we hover on something, it's going to have that hovered effect. If not, then it's going to be set to nothing, which is still going to be the default. And then we'll want to just pass in whatever cursor type currently is. So we'll just leave it like that. And then we'll just save this. And now in our global styles JS, we can scroll down to the cursor and then we can add in whatever the hovered effect styles is. So if I do an ampersand dot hovered, we're going to set the background to transparent just so that we can get rid of the background. And I'll add an important just in case to so that it won't have any overriding issues. And I also want to make the cursor larger. So I'll do a width of 56 pixels and a height of 56 pixels. And then I'll add a border and the border is going to be four pixels. It's going to be solid and it's going to have that red background. So I'll use props to access that theme colors red background. Okay, so let's save this and let's see if it's working. So we did get an error and the error we're getting is custom cursor JS. So cursor type is not defined in custom cursor JS. And that's fine. Uh, that's because the cursor type is being brought in from that global state. So we could just write a context up here and we'll want to import the use global state context. Uh, we don't need dispatch here because we're not updating anything. And so we only need to access the value. So we're just going to use the state. So we'll use global context here and we'll use the structuring to only access the cursor type and we'll access that from, or sorry, not from, but we'll set that assigned to use global state context. Save that. And then back in our project here, when we hover, you can see that it gets updated to the hovered class name. That's because we're updating the global states, letting it know that what we're passing in or what we're hovering on should have a hovered class name on it. Okay, so that's really cool. Now, one thing I want to also do is that when we hover on this red circle, it should turn the cursor color to whatever the uh, theme's text color is. And we can easily do that. We can go back in to the header JS here. And I'll do the exact same thing we did for the logo. So with logo, we did a mouse enter and a mouse leave, and we updated the global state to make it have hovered for our cursor. We can do the same thing on the span tag. Okay, so I just copied and pasted, but I want to change hovered to say pointer. If we save that, we'll want to update whatever the global styles is and add a pointer class. So we'll do and dot pointer. And the only difference with pointer is that the border color will be different. So I'm going to copy what we have for border here, but I'm changing the theme from red to text. Let's save this. And back in our project, when we hover on the logo, it will have that border of red. But when we hover on the red circle, it <laughs> didn't do anything. Okay, let's see if we need to refresh. We do not. Okay, so something is missing here. I think what's missing is that we aren't overriding the styles. And to make sure that you override the styles, we'll just use that important in CSS. Now let's check it out. So if I hover on the red circle, it should turn black as it does. And so since that text color is dynamic between the theme, whether it's white or black, if it's a dark theme, the 
color will turn white. And so this is sort of an indicator to the user that, hey, you can hover on the link, but when you hover on this red circle, that there's something additional to it, something that will allow you to change the theme, which is pretty cool in my opinion. This isn't something I came up with. This is to the creditors of the people who made the Furrow Studio site. Okay, so we could see that now we have the custom cursor going. We hover on this, it updates to a certain style, and we hover on the red circle. It still has that hover effect, but it just changes the color. Now that this makes a little bit more sense, I do wanna break down that on cursor function that we talked about. So we'll open up Layout.js and we'll open up Header. These are the only ones that matter right now, so let me explain a few things. We have this on cursor function that's being passed down to the header, and so on cursor is taking in a cursor type. Now we can rename this anything we want, but just make sure you don't rename the cursor type that is in the global state. So what cursor type here is representing is whether it's going to be hovered or whether it's going to be pointer. And now essentially what we're saying is the cursor type is going to equal whatever was defined only if that what we defined is included in the cursor styles array. If it isn't, then cursor type will be false, meaning that we're not going to update the style, we're just going to leave it as a default. Then we have a dispatch that will update the global state of the cursor type to whatever cursor type here is defined. So this would just essentially be cursor type, and this would say either hovered, or it would say pointer, depending on what you want it to say. I'll set it back to the cursor type parameter, just so that we can have a dynamic and update uh, depending on what our argument here is. That's going to do it for this episode. We did add a custom cursor as well as the custom cursor styles and then allowed it to have different dynamic effects depending on what we hovered. We do have more effects that we're going to add to this cursor, but in the next video, we're either working on the banner section with the canvas or working on the navigation menu. Look forward to the next video. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe. That truly helps me out and have a wonderful day.